Hey everybody. Hello. Uh, Michael sir. Yes, Miss yes. Linda. Yeah, so it's our great honor to bring you here tonight because we want to we okay. would like to know more about you. Okay. So let's introduce yourself. Great. Well, look, uh, my name you know what my name is because we've just said it really. I've been hairdressing now for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. Um I started I started in Australia. This is where, where obviously I grew up and my career commenced. You know, I worked for a company pretty early on that was pretty much quite sort of strong in education. Mm -hmm. So I was very fortunate. So education and training and all these things that, you know, I, that I learned in the beginning sort of came from those foundation of, you know, the, the, the company that I worked for. So I ended up then obviously training our young people in, in, our, in our salon. What can I tell you? Was it a, a gift given to me from up above that I could teach someone what I knew? And I taught them in a way that they understood and they felt that they could obviously go on and deliver what I taught them back on the salon floor. So, look, I just I, I developed a passion for teaching and mentoring, you know, from a very young age. So let's talk about like um, you mentioned about mentor because mentor or educator or maybe we talk about there's a difference. Doctor, they were so different, right? Yes, yes. An educator, look, I think that an educator is someone that teaches from a resource, from a from a picture or a diagram or whatever it might be, and then go on the academy floor and just teach from a book. Very sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, but to me, as a mentor, they take what we see on a book, on a textbook, for instance, and I give them my personal experience, my life experience as a hairdresser, and then put the two together. That is why I feel I'm a mentor rather than an educator. There's a difference. Tell us more about like, okay, because you all the time is like, oh, oh I think oh, in your life, you, you live in Australia yes. and now you move to Hong Kong. It's the second year, right? Yes. Two so what's years the here in Hong Kong. What's the difference between these two different country about, about everything? I mean, education, hairdressing, or maybe the lifestyle here is, is you know, so rush in Hong Kong. You know that? It's not like a relaxing country. So what's the difference you feel? How you feel? I think that when I first came to Hong Kong, I mean, there was an there's an energy about the city. Okay. There is an an incredible energy. I came here. I started, you know, I, I started teaching here, uh, just part time. I started mm -hmm. doing clients here. I was like, you know, that that expat that came over to Hong Kong, did some hair drank some wine, ate some food, and then went back to Australia, you know, went back to Sydney. And But I tell you, there was one thing that I will never forget, and I think it was probably my very first first or second trip, you know, and um, the person I was with went to a salon here in Hong Kong, a very reputable salon then, and I think still is now, but we went into the salon and she went in to have a blow dry, okay? So I'm... I'm sitting there, I'm watching this blow dry happen. And I thought, my goodness, the service, the level of quality expertise. I just thought, wow, this Hong Kong is amazing. Yes. The, the way they, the way this service, this blow dry was an hour and a half. I thought, oh my God, I'm sitting there waiting, going, hurry up. You know, <laughs> the blow dry should only take 30 minutes. Why are you taking an hour and a half? But then, you know, I saw all the service that was behind it and, you know, the, 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 the basin area and the way things, the way, th just this whole service from start to end was just amazing. But, and then I obviously went back to Sydney. So, you know, in Australia, education was, you had to. There was a qualification in, in Australia. You had to before you could work in a salon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here in Hong Kong, that qualification doesn't exist, okay? Same in other as, words... Same as Malaysia. Sort of, sorry, the same as Malaysia, okay. Yeah. Then I kept on coming over back and forth and things had started to change, you know? I started to see salons close down. I started to 
and then just start to speak to people and start to pe- speak to young people that had no qualification, but they were, I don't know, shampooing for so many years and were never growing and were yeah. never becoming never becoming the hairdresser that I think they should be, you know, with the juniors here. So our juniors in Australia have an apprenticeship. They go from one to four years and almost become a senior stylist. In other words, we have structure in place for hairdressers to become senior stylists in Australia. And just Hong Kong, I just felt just sort of at at times, young people never had the opportunity to become senior hairdressers. So... But look, the city had an incredible energy when it came to fashion, creativity, um, and hey, that's why I moved here. Tell us more. What is your big mission to bring to Asia? What, what I want to bring is I want to bring technique. I want to bring skills. I want to bring a mentorship program. I wanted to show hairdressers here in Hong Kong that, you know, there's more than just cutting hair on the salon floor for five mm-hmm. years and that's all. I want to show them how to become a business leader or a business, someone that could potentially open up a business because, you know, the thing is you ask me about my mission and what I bring. I mean, mm-hmm. I see so many young people, young hairdressers, and all I want to do is to make them better like just now you mentioned about the social media is so important now. So Very. what what do you think of the future like online courses about hairdressing? Listen, online courses, they need to happen. Yes. I believe that. But not, um, not full, right? Not, I mean, not Not everything. full? No, no, not everything. Just Listen, like I cannot, human, right? I, yeah, I cannot teach you to be a hairdresser on a YouTube clip. Impossible. It's so cool, you know, right? I need face-to-face delivery. But what I can do is I can um, keep on keep on keeping you excited. Like you come to me, learn a cut or a color. Then afterwards, I record a short video or a short, you know, two to three minute documentary or whatever it might be about a cut and a color that I did on someone else. And then I give it to you as a student or a senior hairdresser. And you un- so this keeps you excited. It keeps you wanting to learn more. But I see online, you know, become a hairdresser online in six months. That's bullshit. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. And this is social media, Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube. They are the way our life has become. And I know that I'm not going to lie to you. You know, every night I'm at home looking at YouTube clips of hair, looking at Facebook clips of hair, Instagram. And because I'm here now in Hong Kong, I'll see other, you know, Japan, Korea, and I need to know what they're doing. So social media is a definite must. And I just think that social media can even help a salon um, sort of get themselves out of this out of this terrible feeling at the moment. In other words, contact your clients through social media. Do a live on social media with your clients about a new blow dry or a new product. It's constant engagement with your clientele for their business. Mm. Okay. So let's talk about the future. So do you think the total look, the total image, is, as you told us just now telling us not only cut hair, not only coloring, not only perming. Is that very important for the future about the total image? Uh, yes. So, and we had this conversation with Linda before. So I said to her that back in Sydney, there was a couple of companies that used to have this total image look. In other words, it was like a, a course and salons in Sydney used to have this service. Okay. What happened was why it all stopped and why everything changed was because obviously the cost of everything was becoming so high to have, you know, a a stylist come in, a makeup artist come in, all of these things. So I think some salons obviously decided not to do it, okay? I look here in Hong Kong and I just believe that this is the way of our future. This is the way of our future across Asia. I know that if I can 
I will cut your hair, for instance, then I will get a makeup artist to come in and do your makeup to um, obviously according to your skin tone, your face shape, your clothing. Then I will get a garment specialist or a designer to come in and give you a the correct garment, the correct patterns to wear, the correct colors to wear, you know, from top to bottom, hair, face, clothing. Uh, to me, that is the most incredible experience that anyone could possibly get to have my look, my style, my the way I look to other people. I think that's quite an incredible, incredible service to offer. And I just believe that it is the way. So we are running, obviously, you know, styling courses and we're running long hair styling and image courses. For the last, what are you going to advise to our hairdresser friends, which is like maybe in Hong Kong, Malaysia, or overseas viewers? I, I, I think How your video gain a lot of overseas viewers because you speak their yeah. language. How much time do I have left? Because I have so much to say. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I think, I think, I think I, all I want to say to them, okay, so the biggest thing, and I said, I've said this to you before, you know, never stop learning. Never think that you know everything. Okay? Never think you know everything. Because I don't know everything. Every day, every week, I learn, I learn something every day. Always, always be, and this is, you know, for every hairdresser out there, be compassionate to your staff, be compassionate to your clientele because your clientele are what give you what you want in life, okay? Um, I, I, I think all the educators in, the, in, in Asia and across the world, Every educator there never stop learning with never stop learning something new in education. Um, always try to better yourself, and I always do try to better myself in everything I do. And I'm very hard on myself. I will do something, I will go home and think, "Shit, I should have done it better," you know. And this is, I just think this is the way we have to be to become better. But I just want everybody else to know that. This this industry that I have been in for a long time, I will be in it for a very, very long time to come. And I just, all I want to do now is for whatever amount of time I've got left on this earth to make this industry in Asia and across the world better. I want to make hairdressers better. I want to make junior hairdressers better, uh, educators better everyone I could possibly talk to. I just want them to be better. And that is my mission. If I can help you, I will. If you tell me, shut up, you know nothing, I won't talk to you again. That's okay. But give me, give me the opportunity. Give me the opportunity to try and help or talk to you in a, in a different way. That's all. Thank, thank you thank so you much. Thank, thank you for your time. Bye, everybody.